Welcome back, everybody. Special shout out to everybody watching 8th period. Everybody say hi to 8th period. Hi, period. Oh, are they going to be watching this video? Yeah, they're going to be watching this video when they go. So, yeah. Um, so, everybody, 8th period, make sure you take out your homework and submit your assignment uh, through Canvas. Go ahead and um, pause this video and do the warm up. Okay, get out a separate sheet of paper, pause this video and do the warm up, and then play whenever you're ready. Uh, we're going to go over the, the warm up together. All right, so uh, I think I've talked about it with you guys already. How do I get the negative 3x squared over to the other side? Add it. Now remember, just for everybody playing along a period, this is not, this problem up here, let's call this number one. This problem up here, number one, is not a solve using square roots problem. This is a solve by factoring problem. How do I know that? Well, I see this 8x here. That's my b term. When we talked yesterday, um, about how if I want to solve by factor or solve by using square roots, it cannot have a b term. So I want to add the 3x squared over to the other side. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to get 0 is equal to a positive 3x squared, positive 8x minus 3. And now I have it in standard form, and I go to factor. So we would try to factor by GCF. Is there a GCF in this one? No. And then I see, okay, is there... Is this an easy type or hard type? It's a hard type. So I got to take 3 times negative 3 to get negative 9. What are the factors of negative 9 that I have to get to positive 8? Negative 9, no, positive, positive, nine. positive 9, negative 1, right? Negative 1, positive 9. So I can keep the first term. I wanted to do an example of this because we haven't really had a lot of hard type examples. Remember, what we do here is we rewrite the first term, and uh, I'm sorry, we leave the first term, leave the last term, but rewrite the middle term into the two factors that we use. And at that point, once it gets to four terms, we factor by grouping. We pull out a GCF of an X here to be left over with a 3X minus 1. We pull out the GCF of a 3 to leave a 3X minus 1. So fully factored form is x plus 3, 3x minus 1, equals 0. So now we can say we set each of those factors. We create two mini equations. We say x plus 3 equals 0 and 3x minus 1 equals 0. We subtract the 3 to both sides to get an x is equal to negative 3. And then we add the 1 and then divide by 3 to get x is equal to one-third. If you wanted to write it as a decimal at 0 0.3, that would be fine as well. That's pretty much the hardest type of problem I could give you um, with regard to um, factoring. Okay. That's pretty much it. All right. Now, this is section 9-7. These last three problems, section 9-7. You notice how there's no B term for any of these. There's no just X term. So therefore, I have I have the ability to use solving by square roots. And I hope we understand that this is pretty easy. All you have to do is get the x squared isolated, get the x squared alone, and then square root the other side. So like, for example, here, is the x squared completely alone? Yeah. So I square root the opposite side. What do I have to remember to write? The plus or minus in front of it. So this is really just x is equal to, I go to my calculator. Some of you recognize it, I recognize it, but you can always go to your calculator. And the square root of 49 is just 7. So I say plus or minus 7. And that's my answer. What are we going to miss points on tomorrow? Forgetting the plus or minus. That's pretty much it. Or, I don't know, a lot of people try to just divide by 2 when they go to take a square root. That sometimes happens. I don't know. I don't know why that happens. I had somebody ask me yesterday, where's the square root button? I don't know. I asked, I actually said, this, how did you get to this point? Uh, we subtract the 10. Now, people might try to tell me to divide by 16. First. Remember, you do your addition and subtraction out of the way first. And then we do our division. So 16x squared is equal to 121. Now we divide by 16. Now, I recognize 121 and 16 as perfect squares. So I can, I'm actually going to leave it as a fraction like this. Could you give me a decimal? 
Of course. But when I go to square root it, I'm going to write the plus or minus. I'm going to take the square root of top then bottom. I recognize that the square root of 121 is 11 because I just memorized it at this point. The square root of 16 is 4. So it's just 11 fourths. What does that turn out to be? If I take 121 divided by 16, there's my decimal. I square root my answer and I get 2.75 plus or minus 2.75. Those are both good answers there. Number 13. What do I have to do before I square root? Divide by 3 over to the other side. I divide by 3, and that gets me x squared is equal to 27. And now I can square root. I square root 27, and that gets me 5 points. Round to the nearest hundred. Actually, that would jump it up to 5.20, right? X is equal to 5.20. Good? No. What did I forget? Oh, yeah. It's one of those things. It's a careless mistake that you, some of you guys are going to miss points on. Don't forget. Now, why am I stressing that so much? Because if you just write X is equal to positive 5.20, that's only showing one of your solutions, right? If you've got a quadratic that hits the, hits the axis twice, you've got to show both places that it hits, okay? All right, let's go over the homework. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to have you guys read off some answers here, and I, I'm going to get my book out. I'll check them as we go. Ugh. On page 639. <sighs> All right. This is a pretty easy to read off. Hayden Tripp, what did you get for 17? This is what you had, right? 17 to 36? Um, I think so. What did you have for 17? 13. What's that? Plus or minus 13 for number 17. Very good. Thank you for just doing this. Um, shout out, Joey. Joey should be watching the video too, right? Hi, Daddy. Will. Joey, Joey, the, the code, we should give him a code word to say. The code word is moo. The code word is moo. If you come and moo at us, I know you will have watched the video. That's a weird thing. So he's going to remember it if he sees it. Moo. Like a cow. And I need it to be, like, you can't just say the word moo. You actually got to come in and, like, <laughs> we live we, we live in Hartville Union Town. We all know what a cow sounds like. Uh, Mr. Fry, what did you get for number 18? Good. Plus or minus five. Travis, number 19. Undefined. Very good. Undefined. Thank you. Undefined. How do you know that it's undefined? Can you explain that one to us? Like what makes it undefined? Very good. You can't square root a negative. If you go to do it in your calculator, it's going to give you domain error, right? Number two. Thank you. Baker, what'd you get for 20? Plus or minus 100. Good. Number 21. Uh, Mr. Schumbeck. Undefined, very good. Number 22, Rosalie. Um, uh -oh. These are so easy. You're doing the calculator. Let's do that. Hey. Plus or minus 25, good. Nevaeh, what did you get for 23? That one is defined. That one is defined. Let's go through that one real quick. I actually want to do this one because it comes out as either a decimal or a fraction as well. Um, We've got 4 minus 81 x squared is equal to 0. What did you do first? What would you do first? Good. Negative 81 x squared is equal to negative 4. Then do what? Okay. Now, let's get the decimal answer. So four, I'm going to cancel off the negative. So four divided by 81 is this decimal. Really weird. Uh, 0 0.49 or 0 0.049. And then I'm going to go to square root that. 
So x is equal to, see it is defined because it's positive. So we can go the square root of that thing is 0.2 repeating. 0 0.2 repeating. So plus or minus. Yeah, that's fraction form. Um, what do you get when you square root 4? Square root 4? You get 2. What do you get when you square root 81? 9. Oh. That's the same thing as 0.2 no. repeating. Either answer would be set there. Yeah. Um, that was problem number 23. So what do we get for 24, Liam? Um, x equals um, plus or minus negative 12.25. Um, that, when you square root that, wait a second, 24. Uh, yeah, that should be undefined. Right. It should be negative. That oh, that's be. right. Yeah, that one should be undefined. Number 25, Serenity? So what's that? Plus or minus 5 eighths. Yeah, plus or minus 5 eighths. If you had it as a decimal, 0.625. Plus or minus 0.625. Uh, number 26, question. 26? Yeah. Four, plus or minus 4 thirds. Plus or minus 4 thirds, plus or minus 1 and 1 third, plus or minus 1.3. Taylor, what did you get for 27? 1 and 6 sevens, that's good. 13 sevens, or what is that as a decimal? 13 sevens is 1.86. Um, and number 28. David, did you do this? No. You got your earbud in too? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. Uh, David, what do I do first here in 28? Come on, man. 81x squared plus 17 is equal to 81. How do I get x squared alone? Nope, not yet. Subtract 17. So we get 81x squared is equal to, let's take 81 minus 17. I get 64. What do I do now? Get x squared alone, man. Come on, you just tried to say it the first time. Divide by 81. So we get 64 over 81. Now, um, I, I bet you probably want to do it as a decimal. So we get this decimal, 0.79. And what do I have to do to get x as my answer? What well, gets this squared over to the other side? Uh, square root, not divided by 2, square root. We square root my answer, and I get 0.8 repeating. Plus or minus 0 0.8 repeating. Or 8 ninths. That's 8 ninths. Guys, if you ever get number a number just point that repeating, it's that ninth. Like 0.5 repeating is 5 ninths. 0.6 repeating is 6 ninths. 0.7 repeating is 7 ninths. That's just the way it works out. It's just the way if you divide it, it's just a repeating decimal like that. Okay, uh, we got 29 through 34 now. These should all be decimals. What's good for 29, John? Plus or minus 4.89. Very good. Number 30, Hayden Rudder? Uh, What'd you say? Good. I'd say 5.39, but I would accept 5.38 as well. Um, ben, what'd you get for number 31? Thirty-one. Plus or minus 10 .2. Good. Or 10.20. That's what the book has. Uh, number 32. Berkeley, what did you say for 32? X equals plus or minus 5.29. Very good. And number 33, Alex? Um, okay, what would I do for, for 33? Uh, Tell me. Uh, you could just add X Good. So we get 50 is equal to x squared. And then what would I do? Good. Do it real quick. What do you get? Uh, 
There should be something oh, in front of it. Yeah, plus or minus 7.07. Uh, the book has, let me check the depth. Yeah, they book has 7.07. And number 34, Mason, what did you get for 34? 6.0 is exactly what I had as well. Are there any uh, through 34 that anybody would like to talk to or go over? I'll talk about it in a second. Um, okay, I want to look at these two word problems. First seen in a movie, a sack of money is dropped off a 600-foot skyscraper. So here's the building. Here's here's my, my guy. He's going to drop a bag of money. And it's going to go... Maybe he's throwing it to his, like his buddy down here. And he's trying to catch it or something. Okay. <laughs> uh, so the, the function can be modeled h is equal to negative 16 t squared plus 600. I want to know when it's going to hit the ground. What point is that when it's going to hit the ground? What's that called? <laughs> the zero. The zero of the function. Now, do I have to use factoring to solve? Can I use square roots to solve? Yeah. How do you know that? There's no, uh, there's no V term. There's no just X term. There's no just T term here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to subtract the 600. Negative 16 T squared is equal to negative 600. Divide by negative 16. So that's going to give me 600 over 16 is 37.5 and I go to square root that 6.12 now I write the plus or minus but do I consider the negative no I can have a bad time but you can't have negative time right so 6.12 seconds that's how long it's going to hit, take to hit the ground. Okay. Last word problem here, number 36. The area of a square is 396. How do I write the area of that square that's drawn there? Length times width, but they're both the same because it's a square, right? So x squared, side squared, x squared. x squared is equal to 196. Oh, that's an easy equation to solve. That's 13. No, 14. X is equal to plus or minus 14. Do I consider the negative? No. You're right. So it's, one, it's 196 on 169. Oh, okay. There you go. So X is equal to just positive 14. Uh, what do we got? Meters? When it's a word problem, you don't use the plus or minus. It's just the positive word. Okay. All right. So uh, everybody say bye. Did everybody play along in period? Bye. 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 Yeah, that was Carson. Wait, why how do you say your How do you say your last name? Koenig. Koenig. Yeah. How do you think Koenig? Koenig. 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 Koenig.